Well, on my current project, I'm starting to do a little bit of world composition. So I decided to make a video just to show you guys kind of how to do it yourself um, based on tileable landscapes and just generally optimizing a big world. So first to kind of get started, I'm going to explain kind of how I have this organized um, within the maps. This is kind of where I keep all the levels inside this folder. This folder is going to be the world, like the one with all of the different streamed levels. So I click on this world main is kind of where I'm controlling everything and that is this world right here. Once you're inside your world, before you can start doing any level streaming or any world composition, you need to make sure enable world composition is right here on the right. Make sure that this is set to true and then you're ready to get started. So I have this thing called levels up here along with world composition which these aren't natively in the editor the way that, well they are but they're not natively turned on. You have to go into one of these settings and turn it on. I'm not sure. Oh yeah, you just click levels, and then after you click levels, you have the world composition, and then you have level details. Which this window, we're not really going to be using this video, but we are going to be using the world composition, which is summoned with this button. So we're ready to get started. Um, before I do anything, I'm going to make a lighting layer, just so we have like a lit world, and then I'm going to make the uh, landscape itself. So I'm going to no, nope, don't right click, click right here, and hit create new. Inside this, we'll just call this world underscore lighting and get a directional light I'm not really gonna touch it that's really all I need and then we're gonna make a new I don't know why I always right click make a new level and we'll call this one world terrain there we go double click to make it current when you see these is being blue that means they're current so when you drag and drop assets into them you're dragging them into that level if that makes sense next up we're gonna go back to our modes and we're going to make our landscape this is where the fun begins so I'm currently using a height map right here this height map I'm getting from my desktop we're gonna splice this into several pieces and then we're going to stream them so if you don't know what the result here is, uh, have you ever played Minecraft and then you're kind of walking through the world and it generates chunks as you're moving across the landscape? Especially when you're in creative mode, you're flying through the world and you have to kind of wait for the rest of the world to load and then the other stuff that's behind you despawns as you move throughout everything. This is kind of how you would set that up and you want to do this in a big world because you don't want a ton of stuff being loaded in the system at all times. It's just bad for performance. But anyway, uh, let's go ahead and import this. You'll see this thing pop up big landscape in a second here with some high mountains and stuff just because I have this height map uh, and you can paint it yourself you don't have to use a height map this is just this is just kind of how I do things just because I don't like to paint landscapes I think it's kind of I think it's easier to do just inside of Photoshop so anyway now that our terrain is loaded and we're kind of ready to start selecting pieces and then disconnecting them and then loading them into their own chunks technically so if I go to the top view really quick our next step is to start, well, I'm going to set this to unlit so I can actually see, but our next step is to start selecting pieces. Uh, and I've done four by four pieces and then had 16 different original squares. But for this case, we're going to have it be much larger than that. I'm just going to kind of select half and half. It should be a good eight by eight square. And then we're going to go and do the same thing on all the other four sides. And I'll show you how to do this. That looks even enough. Anyway, um, so I'm going to go back to landscape. You click move to level. I'm going to go ahead and say for the terrain, we'll select this and do dash 001. Okay. We'll create another level in here real quick. And this next level is going to be called World Terrain 002. Create another called 003. And so on. We have all these partitioned into their own little pieces, and these are each separate maps now. Uh, we go back to our terrain level so we can actually see this. We have our selection still, and we want to say move to level. We click, and it moves to a level. I think I just moved it back to its own level. Click 002 so it knows what to do. Go back to your selection. Grab the half. And we'll go ahead and move this to a level. We click it. We wait. It should actually separate this from the landscape, and it'll move it to the other level. Takes a little bit. But there's our level two. So now there's our level one and our level two. We'll start continuing to separate these. Uh, so this for the next one, I'm just going to double click 003 and we'll get our third part. All right, and now we are set. 
So we have our partitioned landscape. It's partitioned just into four simple pieces. You can, again, if you, depending on how really how crazy you want to go, you can just divide this into more pieces. I think Skyrim divided their world streaming system into like thousands. It was crazy how many they had. But I'm just doing four for demonstrative purposes. So moving to the world composition menu. Um, you can actually visualize the four different pieces, which I split kind of unevenly in the middle. <laughs> um, but these are our four individual pieces that we're going to actually move to their own layer. And I'm going to kind of go over the layer system up here because I just don't feel like a lot of people talk about it. Um, there's actually no technical way to delete layers. So I'm going to show you how to do that so you don't get frustrated because you're going to be playing with the streaming distance. This value is just going to be something you play with. I'm going to set my streaming distance to, well, let's just say 10,000 for the demonstration call this terrain I hit create uh, there's nothing on the terrain layer to be actually have to move it to the terrain layer select these assign to the terrain layer so now we can visualize our terrain and our uncategorized and again like I said there's not there's nothing you can really do you can't really right click on this um, the way to technically delete a layer is to clear everything from it and then restart the map so if that makes any sense I'll show you how that works though but anyway, we'll go back in, we click play, and we should notice things are disappearing. Okay, so right now, that level's gone. As I move closer to that level, you should see it come into distance. You should see it spawn in. There it is. It spawned in. As I keep moving, oh, you see how that one kind of disappeared as I got closer to it? That distance is based on however many Unreal units it is away from you. You can see on the left, you can actually see how the, this is gone, and this is gone, and I know that because they kind of fade away uh, on the actual menu. And there, there that one loads in. You can see it on the left as it comes in through the top view, and you can see it in the actual game as you kind of move around inside the world. Well, we want to set that distance to something higher, something that makes a little bit more sense. So again, you can't really edit this. So what I do is I go in, set these back to the uncategorized. Now there's nothing in the terrain. Make sure of that and we save everything. I go back into world main and if you noticed it disappeared. So now we can make our new layer. We'll call it terrain <laughs> and we'll set the streaming distance to uh, maybe 50,000. Should be good enough. Hit create and we'll move all of our terrain to that layer. Oh, that's got to see it first though. Click play to visualize it. And it looks like everything is loaded in. Hopefully all of that makes sense to you guys. Hopefully you can get your nice landscapes cut up and put into the levels. Um, and I hope I made world composition a little bit easier. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.